Hi guys, how you doing? We're uh, we're back for video number eleven. God, eleven! Can you believe you did eleven videos? <laughs> this is this is the wrap up. This is the wrap up to our previous ten, which is kind of like a summation about uh, what our experiences were in Ecuador. The entire purpose of this trip was a combination of two things. It was a combination of due diligence and vacation, and we wanted to go ahead and take a look and see what Ecuadorian life. Uh, was all was was all about. And remember, wait, wait, wait. Remember, everything we say right now is our opinion. It's what we saw there, how we felt there, and we want to let you guys know about it. That's really what we do. We give you our opinion. Let's go ahead and cut to the chase. Come on, let's talk about what we saw. They don't want to hear this shit anymore. Uh, Quito is a is the capital city. Of, uh, of Ecuador. It's got about, I think, 2.1 million people uh, in the city. It's about wow. 9,500 feet in altitude. Uh, and that was one of our first concerns, and that is altitude sickness. Uh, when, you're, when you're running around doing things at 9,500 feet, uh, you're going to be out of breath. You are going to feel, feel lousy, headachy. Uh, fortunately for us, we, didn't, uh, we never experienced any of those problems. Wait, 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 wait. I got terrible sinus headaches. Don't you remember that? But you get sinus headaches all the time. No, no, no. There it was pretty bad. Okay. But then they gave me something very cool to drink. So um, it was a tea made of coca leaves, and that's supposed to help you. And it actually did. So I only had like a day or so. That was all. Don't you remember? Yeah, I do remember. Oh, okay. okay. Quito, as you probably know, is the capital of Ecuador. Lots of people, crowded situations, lots of cars. But one thing that really uh, got to me the most was, the, was how compact and how dense Quito was. When you look at the surrounding areas, uh, the way houses are built close together, up on sides of mountains, it kind of blew me away as to just how compact and how dense uh, the town was. Uh, getting around town, you pretty much need a taxi cab or you can rely on other forms of public transportation with buses. Bottom line for Quito was it really didn't turn us on. Uh, we're not big city people. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we left the United States. And uh, we didn't, really didn't like to live and to operate in a big city environment. Kodakachi was a nice, tranquil bedroom community. Uh, they're known for their leather goods. But uh, I couldn't see myself living in, in nah. Kodakachi. What about you? Nah, I don't think so. It was small. It was beautiful. What amazed me so far, everything we saw in Ecuador was how clean it was. Um, you didn't have a lot of litter around. I didn't see many stray dogs at all. Lots of people, hustle bustle. I'd say in Kodakachi, it was just a small town. Um, beautiful leather stuff, beautiful purses. I wish we were there longer so you know I could do some damage on the credit card. Um, but we just spent a little day trip and had a great lunch there. So it was a great little town, uh, but not for us. It, it's really too small, don't you agree? No question about it. I think I would just absolutely go crazy if I had to live in a very small community like Kotakachi. Great place to visit, but really not high on my list for a, for a place to live. But I'll tell you what really, really amazed me uh, were some of the infrastructure issues dealing with Ecuador. And you know, right now we're talking about, about the Quito area. The highway system. The highway system that we ran across, with the exception of maybe a few of the back roads, was absolutely 100% spot on to US standards. They were lit, they were well marked, uh, they were wide. Uh, they were great, great roads, and uh, which is something that we are not used to in Costa Rica. Bottom line, for us, Quito was, was no big deal. Those of you who are interested in larger cities, you might find Quito to be an excellent choice. It's got the best medical care in all of, uh, in all of Ecuador. It is a relatively safe area. I loved all the parks they had. I loved that they had that little, um, I guess, park for the kids to take their bicycles in, uh, do skateboarding, uh, do, do uh, what was that, paddle boats that you could go along that little river thing they had built there. I mean, it looked like a great downtown area. So if you're into a lot of culture, a lot of shopping, um, um, they had movie theaters, I'm sure they have regular theaters. So Quito, not for us, but you guys might love it. I mean, it's just a big town environment. So it just depends if that's what you like. 
you would love Quito. The prices were cheap. Um, I think the rentals were moderate. The ones we looked at, but you know, as I say, we're not big town people, so that 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 wouldn't be for us. So the next town we went to is my love, <laughs> the beach. We went to the beach. Uh, we chose a uh, beach area called Esmeraldas. Our time at the beach was the best overall weather we've experienced since being in Latin America. Period. But you got to remember, we like the beach, so we like it a little bit warmer. For those of you who like it cooler, you probably wouldn't like the beach area, but I thought it was amazing. We stayed in the beach community of Atacames, which is about maybe 15 minutes south of where uh, uh, Esmeraldas is, and specifically in a community called Tansupa. Uh, there we stayed at a condominium, a uh, condominium resort. The beach area was absolutely stellar. The grounds of the uh, condominium were absolutely stellar. I agree, I agree. Um, but it's, once you left the compound, mm. what else was there to do? Um, there wasn't a strong... Um, expat community. Expat community, expat infrastructure, if you will. Um, in that in that particular area, so to me that would be a uh, that would be a bit of a uh, a downside. I mean, I love the beach, but I'll be honest, I love the beach in Costa Rica a little better. What I did not like is miles and miles of beach um, and condo after condo after condo. It's really not my style. If you're a condo lover and you love the beach, you probably love it there. I felt. Um, very safe when we were in the compound of the resort. I did not feel safe. We were warned a couple of times not to walk in this one certain area of the beach. We would only stay by the condos where the guards were. So that gave me the heebie-jeebies a little bit. I did not feel safe there. And that's part of the overall problem because in the area that we were at at the beach, there was we did not see one cop. For three days that we were there, there wasn't a traffic cop, there wasn't a cop walking the beat. We were walking in some of the downtown areas. I did see one guy who looked like a cop who was directing traffic in the downtown area of Atacames. But that was it. So um, that was kind of disturbing. And um, I would have liked to have seen a greater police presence. And the town was interesting. We walked around the town, but we had, we had a taxi driver with us, and he kept telling us, you know, put the camera away here. Now, maybe he's just being overcautious. We didn't see anybody come close to us or didn't feel threatened, but he just made me a little nervous the way he kept saying, make sure you put this away, tuck it under your shirt, or don't leave it out. I don't know. That just made me nervous. I guess in summation, the beach area, the one beach area that we visited, uh, there were, from a standpoint of overall costs, uh, cost of living itself is very, very low. Cost of purchase, cost of rentals, very, very low. People can get in there with nice uh, upscale condominiums. They could buy for well under two hundred thousand dollars. They could rent for oh, well. Way under two. They could rent for well under uh, one thousand a month and be right on the beach or at most one block off the beach. Single family homes we did not see very many of. So from a standpoint of housing, you're pretty well limited to condominium type apartments. Uh, restaurants, uh, it's on the beach, it's got some touristy kind of places, overall pretty good, and prices knock your socks off. The, uh, and as for the inf road infrastructure, internet, television, spot on, really good, solid stuff. And relatively clean and no stray dogs. I mean, it, it was nice. And, and I really think in five to ten years, that place will be really nice. I would pretty much consider Atacames and Tansupa a hidden gem. It's some place that if you really enjoy the beach life uh, and you really don't crave any kind of uh, or very much of an, uh, of an expat uh, environment, then that may be a place that you would want to check out. Certainly you can go ahead and live there for, uh, for pennies on the dollar uh, compared to the U.S. and pretty much at least a good solid third less than what you can live at uh, in, in Costa Rica. Our final stop, which is our favorite place so far, is Cuenca. Cuenca is located seven hours by bus or by car south of Quito. Um, it was a great town, very popular with expats. 
I felt extremely safe there. So quaint, great walkable town. We visited a couple of hospitals that amazed me. And you'll see on one of the other videos, we inquired about costs and things like that. It's, it's amazing. Um, so they have what, 911 service there. They got street names and addresses. Oh, yeah. So that if you need an ambulance or if you gotta, you gotta call up the, the cops or a fire department or something like this, you can tell them you're at 15-11 uh, Simon Boulevard Boulevard and they'll, they'll come right to your place. I think the population was what, 400,000 about? Four or 500,000 Masamenos. But I heard only about 1,500 uh, expats. So it has a, a pretty decent expat community. It's got movie theaters, it's got malls, it's got, um, as I say, great infrastructure, great hospitals, um, great walking town or buses. It was just beautiful, just absolutely beautiful. The weather was well, for me it was a little chilly, but I would get used to that in a heartbeat. Um, but some days were warm enough, I mean, that you could wear shorts, but you better have a jacket for the evening. Uh, the restaurants were fantastic. We went out and had the most incredible Italian dinner one night. Ravioli, homemade ravioli, uh, a salad, garlic bread. How many glasses of wine did oh, we have? Six glasses of oh, wine. Oh my God. And the whole bill was like $25. And the food was amazing probably the best food we've had since we left the United States or even in the United States no it was, the, it was it was by far the best meal we've had since leaving the United States oh it was incredible so I think it's a great town do do I well I think the you know had we known about Cuenca before we actually moved to to, to Costa Rica I would think that the chances of us moving to having moved to Ecuador would have been much higher than, uh, than moving to Costa Rica. Um, uh, I don't know. What's to know? What's not to know? I mean, you're near an airport, you got great medical facilities, it had everything that the Central Valley in San Ramon offered, plus it was a thousand times better. And it was a lot cheaper. Yeah, you're and right. We might have, but I do love the beach now that we're here, so my, my mind is tainted towards well, sand. Well, of course, of course. Salt and sand. We're only able to give you our opinion based on the 10 days that we were there, of the people that we had met, of all the questions that we had asked. But keep in mind, we went there with the eye towards getting a lot of these questions answered, uh, which somebody on vacation normally wouldn't ask. I'm hoping that you've gotten that kind of information out of, uh, out of this video series. Well, and the other thing is, we might be tainted right now because we went there due diligence slash vacation mode. We did not go there, we have not lived there. And living is a lot different than exploring and going out to eat all the time and having fun and saying, wow, look at this. So it might be something that warrants another trip for us to kind of check it out and not be so much in lust and make a good decision. Overall, it got Ecuador. pretty high, high marks. Yeah, Ecuador really does get pretty, pretty darn high marks. Lots of people have been touting Ecuador for some time uh, as the number one place that uh, expats are moving to. My personal belief is I don't give a rat's ass what the international travel uh, magazines say, what real estate people say. I really take with a grain of salt everything that these people have to say because I truly believe that there's a conflict of interest. You may go ahead and visit Ecuador or Costa Rica or Panama or any of these other places and find that maybe our, you'll think that we got our heads up our butt or something, that our, our opinions are, are, that, are that off base. That's, I've got no problem with that. But then again, at least you've gone out and you found out for yourself and you've done your own comparison. Although a lot of people are going to be watching this and they're going to say, well, you rated everything so great. Why the hell aren't you moving there? Uh, How are you going to answer that one? Very simply, we love where we're at. Had we known about Ecuador uh, with more detail before coming to Costa Rica, we may very well have moved to Ecuador first. Uh, so that kind of gives you a pretty good heads up as to what, uh, where, our, where our overall thoughts are. But I'll tell you what, when we came home from the airport, we got back to our house, we opened the door and there were our two puppies that we haven't seen 
for about 11 days. Upe and Ashka greeted us like crazy at the door and it was wonderful. But it wasn't two minutes later that we were both Guess out, of, out of our jeans, out of our shirts with longer sleeves And to let them. these people guess where the hell we went with our cooler and chairs. We were at the beach. That's right. See, so we really, we, we've got a great life here. We, we know a lot of people. Andy's playing guitar. We help out, and we love that beach. So if Ecuador had that beach, and if we could find a beach area, and maybe it's the southern beaches, maybe we will consider moving. But Bottom so line, Ecuador is a rocking place. Um, great costs, great infrastructure, very friendly. Uh, I see no reason why it should not be on your short list uh, when you're considering an expat life. This is Andy Brown and Fran with Boomers Offshore saying thanks a lot. We're glad you have uh, been watching these videos and if you guys have any questions whatsoever please feel free to go ahead and jump on our website at www.boomersoffshore.com send us an email or give us a call. We've got a US phone number at 704-469-6356 and we'll try to answer your questions. I think that's it. What Ciao. do you say? Ciao, let's go. Pura Vida.